In this video, I'm going to talk about the application of equal partition theorem and we'll discuss the reason why a heart room may cause suffocation. So I will kick off by asking a very easy and straightforward question regarding the application of thermodynamics. The question is, what would happen to the total energy of air inside your room if you switch on a room heater for around an hour or so? I can guess the most probable answer that you are thinking right now. That is, the energy of the air will increase. If that's your answer, then I regret to share that you are wrong. But fact, don't be discouraged and listen to why I'm saying so. Again, I can guess you disagree with me because our daily observation says that the heat raises the temperature of the room. And for it being an ideal guess, the laws of thermodynamics dictate that the energy of a molecule directly depends on temperature of the room, so the energy will increase. Okay, that's quite right. But in this case, that's not the sole line of reasoning. In fact, there is an addition, another process that you are probably missing. Okay, that's good enough for the pre-mable and let's move to correctly understand the whole scenario. We know from the equipartition theorem that each quadratic degree of freedom possesses an energy of half kT, with k being the Boltzmann constant and T the temperature of medium. I call it quadratic because the translational, rotational and vibrational energies depend on the square of speed and position. Instead of going into further details of the number of degrees of freedom for different types of molecule, I would limit the discussion only to diatomic molecules as the air is mostly diatomic in nature. So the energy of so the energy for a diatomic molecule with 7 degree of freedom becomes E molecule equal 7 by 2 kT. Right, the increasing temperature increases the energy of every molecule. Obviously, the energy content of the room is then given by E total equals sum over all the molecule, molecular energy and can be expressed as 7 by 2 capital N K times T. With N being the number of molecule inside the room and so the total energy seems to be increasing which straightforwardly suggests that you are thinking in the right way. Of course, till this point, you are quite right. But if your argument is limited only to this level, your picture of the problem is not complete. To complete the picture, let's move to another equation of thermodynamics, the ideal case equation, which is PV equals small n times R times T. Just for the sake of refreshing your memories, here N stands for the number of moles or the universal gas constant and the rest three symbols bear their usual thermodynamics meaning that is pressure, volume and temperature. Since the volume of the room is constant as since the volume of the room is constant as it is not expanding with increasing temperature, therefore, I can rewrite the ideal gas equation into the form P equals R divided by V times small n times T. Now here is the catch of the dilemma. For volume being constant, the increasing temperature obviously results in increasing pressure of the air inside the room. For the room being not airtight, the increasing pressure pushes the molecule to leak out through the pores and cracks in the doors and windows of the room, thereby retaining the atmospheric pressure inside the room. 
the leaked out molecule results in reduction of the energy content of the room. In other words, the increasing temperature induces two processes simultaneously. It increases the energy of individual molecule and alongside reduces the number of molecules inside the room in such a way that the product of capital N times T remains constant. Mathematically, the energy of the room satisfied the condition E subtotal equals 7 by 2 times capital N times K times T. Since N times T is constant, therefore it results into a constant value. Although the increase in temperature lets you feel hot, but the total content of energy of the room is not changing. If the temperature of the room is kept too high, it will considerably reduce the number of molecules inside the room. The reduced number of molecules also reduces the level of oxygen inside the room. And for many people inside the room, the reduced level of oxygen may not be sufficient for inhaling normally and this may cause suffocation or difficulties in breathing.